early October 2007. The CAGC is holding its fourth annual signature event. Seismic in motion. coming out to Seismic in Motion. 150 students from three schools. Exciting and educational demonstrations. Donate their people, time, and effort to make it a success. Unique learning experiences. Valuable career information. Educational excellence through industry and academic partnerships. One of the most important values of the seismic industry is the health and safety of the workers, stakeholders, and public. You'll be heading over there to get uh, your safety vest, hard hat, and whatnot. And then we'll be breaking you guys up into two groups. The CAGC incorporates safety into every aspect of their action-packed one-day field trip called Seismic in Motion. Once the students arrive on site, they're equipped with the appropriate personal protective equipment, including reflective safety vests, safety glasses, hard hats, and ear protection. The students took part in a safety orientation that informed them of the potential hazards of the site and emergency procedures. Students were advised to dress appropriately for an outdoor environment and the possibility of changing weather, which for the trip on Thursday proved to be good advice. After all the government approvals and landowner consent has been obtained, the site must be surveyed. Our seismic in motion survey experts demonstrated the advanced technology used to prepare the area for exploration by marking shutouts, which are zones where we are restricted from, and marking all potential on-site hazards. Why do you think you'd have to stay 180 meters away from a cement or a concrete foundation with a uh, seismic shot hole? So you don't damage the foundation? The students were shown orthophoto maps and light detection and ranging data commonly referred to as LIDAR. Used in conjunction with highly accurate global positioning satellite equipment or inertial navigation survey instruments, experts position and survey the lines. This unit here is called an INS pack, which stands for Inertial Navigation System. You're looking at about 400,000 for one of these. Students were challenged to estimate the distance of a faraway target. Right below that is a set of prisons. I've actually got take duct tape for the next one. I want you guys to give me a distance of what you think it is in meters from this instrument right here to that prison up there on the hill. And the winner was determined by using conventional survey equipment. All the skill. 72 meters. I got 70. Ah. I he got 73. I am impressed. He does the application. He's a lucky guy. Oh, Getting presents every day, man. <laughs> The next phase of the seismic process is called line clearing, a process which uses mechanical equipment or chainsaws to clear a narrow trail in order to make passage for equipment and workers. <laughs> Students saw firsthand how the geophysical industry has become much more environmentally conscious, demonstrated by the increased use of equipment called mulchers, which mulch timber to create a narrow path through the forest. So much fun. <laughs> I could be in English right now. This is much better. A variety of machinery was on hand, which was provided by member companies of the CAGC. 
These companies also selected key personnel and equipment operators who explained how the mulchers operated and the low impact nature of these new line clearing techniques. You guys have to sit inside this thing. It's run with two joysticks, TV cameras front and back. Yeah, Volunteer, one of you guys just has to come in and see this thing. So you use these things That's to it. move around? That's how you That's work it? it? That's all it's cool. At this location, the students were able to view the rapid regrowth of a line constructed with a mulcher just the previous year. Why would the meandering line be better for the environment and the animals than a straight line. So with the pine beetle infestation, have you had to like mulch stuff? You know, for, for everything we see today, I really want you to be thinking a little bit about, you know, I could be doing this uh, since I leave high school. Students were escorted to the drilling area where they were shown how seismic shot holes are prepared. The contractors provided a variety of drills for the students to see. There were low ground pressure buggies, track rigs, and a very small heliportable system. If each shot hole was 10 meters deep, how many shot holes is on that program? We'll pass this bit around. The students were allowed to handle real drill bits and observe at close range air hammer drill demonstration, whereby the drill bit hammered a path into an exposed boulder. Local media was on hand to interview students regarding their opinions of the event and their future career plans. Like, have you ever thought possibly of a career in seismic before today? Yeah, for sure. Once shot holes are drilled, they are carefully loaded with an explosive charge. Students were shown procedures and techniques of the loading phase and some of the various products that can be used in this application. Sometimes shot holes fill with water, so you want these anchor wings here prevent it from floating back up the hole. PETN stands for Penta Erythritol Tetranitrate. This charge is, is basically a nitroglycerin based explosive. Penalite, the molecular explosive. The special storage requirements, such as high security magazines for explosives, were explained by experts. The drill logs compared to this has to actually physically match what's totally left in the magazines. Very heavy, huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. In some cases, companies may select alternate energy sources, such as an elastic wave generator or a vibro sized truck. We don't leave a very big footprint when we're on. It's a very small, lightweight machine. It's very environmentally friendly. And uh, it can go down very narrow lines. It's only two meters wide. These alternate energy sources were also part of the SIM demonstration. What we've done is taken a beer bottle. And all we're going to do is place that detonator inside that bottle. We're going to put that uh, plate on top of it. Then we're going to secure it so it doesn't blow off. Who wants to set off this shot? <laughs> like everybody wants to, eh? What's your name? Doug. Doug? Screw that down for me. Make sure she's snug. So, on the count of three, Doug. One, two, three. Boom. You just set off your first. You hear that? That's the shrapnel. So, one, two, Three. <laughs> you just fired up your very first shot, Michelle. A little less than a gram of explosive content in there. Let's see what it did to that bottle. Whoa. So you want to be very careful if you ever find one, don't ever try to open one. <laughs> 